Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a common trap that people face while on the spiritual path called naive realism versus naive solipsism. So if we're on the spiritual path and we're seeking enlightenment, um, it involves deep contemplation on the nature of self and the nature of reality. So what we try to do is we try to look at our beliefs and we try to separate beliefs from what reality actually is. That way we can see what's true beyond all appearances. But because all beliefs are thoughts and the human intellect is limited to understandings of a practical nature and not existential truth, all beliefs are inherently bereft of truth. So the mind itself can generally understand how things work, but not what self and reality actually are. So this process of becoming aware of beliefs and emptying our cup of false beliefs requires extreme open-mindedness and a questioning of our basic assumptions about how reality works. And one of those basic assumptions that almost everyone shares is a belief called naive realism. So naive realism is basically the assumption that reality is as it appears and that reality is as we believe it to be. So in this reality that naive realism um, sets up, we're basically these individual human beings um, that make up a really, really small part of this infinitely vast universe. And the universe is impersonal. So our perspective doesn't really have any effect on what goes on here. So if I, you know, think things are a certain way, it doesn't matter. The reality is going to continue to go on a particular way anyway. And if, let's say, a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to witness it, the tree has definitely fallen. And if I leave my house to go to the store, as soon as I get out of eyeshot of my house, it's still there for sure. So it's this belief that, um, because we're experiencing things in a consistent way that that consistency lends itself to a kind of realness that you know the world basically works consistently and because it appears to be consistent it is consistent and in accordance with the worldview of naive realism every person that you meet is basically having the same experience so if I'm perceiving of the world in the way that I am, we can bet that another person is experiencing the same world in a similar way with maybe slight variations, like if a person can't see the world as well, or maybe their intellect doesn't work quite as well, or you know maybe they can't hear as well. These type of variations are still within the worldview of naive realism, but more so it's just a basic assumption that what's going on here, everyone's basically perceiving it the same way, and that those those people who are perceiving it are also separate from us. They also have their own perspective and their own thoughts and their own feelings. So there's definitely a sense of like there's other people here. So that's an assumption that comes along with naive realism. Now, of course, this is the way reality certainly seems to function because this is how it works practically for us. Um, so this is why naive realism is the default uh, mode of understanding the world for most people. Most people never even question it. But if we really look closely and we really think about what's going on here and the many different interpretations that could be applied to it, um, then we can notice that naive realism doesn't really have any grounds or backing or proof. We've never seen a shred of evidence for it. And because we've never seen any evidence to support naive realism, this is why naive realism is called naive realism. So naive realism essentially has many holes because we're limited to this one little bubble of experience. So all of the things that we see and hear and smell and taste and touch and think are all happening essentially within this like small experience and we don't know if there's really even anybody else who's having the same experience. So if we see another person we kind of assume that they have also thoughts um, and they're you know smelling things tasting things, feeling things, hearing things, seeing things as well. But that's also an assumption because we have never been out of this bubble of experience. We've never been in anybody else's bubble of experience. 
So for all we know, you know, our experience could be the only one that exists. Or if there are other perspectives, maybe their perspective is completely different, even if we're interacting with them in the same world. So if I look at my room and I see that it has brown walls, you know, the other person could also hey, say, oh, the room has brown walls, but they're really seeing that color as green, or at least how I see the color green. And because we're essentially in this bubble of experience, anything that isn't directly in that bubble, we don't know if it still exists. So if we leave our house and we go to the store, we don't know if our house still exists because it's not in our bubble of experience. And if there are no other perspectives and everything else is just nothingness outside of this perspective, then we don't really know if like if we're not looking at something at the present moment, if it still is indeed there. So we're essentially putting a lot of trust into this bubble of experience to show us something that's true when it may indeed not be true. It could just be one huge illusion. So if we start to go meta on that little bubble of experience that we have, um, what we can start to notice is that reality comes to us in six main modes of perception. So we have sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. And then we also have thought. Um, so it's really all of these things in combination together that make up what our reality is. Now, if we're being really mindful about what we're experiencing, we'll notice that each of those uh, perceptions that we're having or things that we're experiencing generally, they don't have any real link to one another. So our sense of sight doesn't really have any clear link to our sense of hearing. You know, it's like those things exist completely in separate dimensions and the only reason why we link them is because we're experiencing them at the same time and we experience a reality where all of those, um, those sensations come together in a consistent way. So I know that if I see a fuzzy object here, if I touch it, that it's going to feel fuzzy too. But the feeling of fuzziness and the sight of the fuzzy object, you know, they aren't necessarily linked other than the fact that we've consistently experienced the world that way. Just like if I take a bite of chocolate cake, you know, I know I've seen the cake and I've smelled the cake and I've tasted the cake and all those things seem to go together as familiar experiences, but all of those sensations themselves exist separate from one another. They just happen simultaneously. So I relate the way my reality works in terms of only perceiving of those six things in terms of like playing the guitar. So the guitar has six strings and all of those strings are completely separate from one another. And the sound that the top string make is completely separate from the sound that the bottom string makes. Um, so it, uh, the top string can be playing a C um, and then the bottom string could be playing an E and it's completely different. But whenever you strum the guitar, all six sounds come together to make a new sound. And so they have this sort of illusion of blending of sounds because sounds come together in one huge blend. So that's the way our sense perceptions work. So if we experience something in our visual sense and we experience something else in our auditory sense and we experience those things together so often, we could conflate those two things and think that those things are linked inherently, but that itself could be an illusion. Perhaps if reality is just spun from these six different types of experiences, maybe it is an illusion because our sense of sight is nothing more than shapes imbued with colors. Our sense of sound is nothing more than vibrations. And our sense of taste is just a sensation. So all of these things can be boiled down to really, really simple units of experience that we fill in so much meaning for, but that meaning isn't necessarily there. So if we look at what we really know about reality, and I mean really know beyond just assuming that we know, all of that happens as the result of our memories of how things have happened in the past, which again could have been a big illusion. 
And the thing about the past is that we don't even know if the past even existed because it doesn't exist now in our direct experience. So the memories that we have, we think, oh yeah, well that happened five years ago and this happened ten years ago. And of course, this is my life story up until this point. But we, what we really have of reality is just what's going on exactly right now. So we have a complete and total blind spot to know if those memories are correlating to anything real and of substance. Perhaps right now is the only moment and right now we're just in this moment and we have the illusion of memories from the past there, almost like it was implanted into us. You know, that's a possibility for how reality might work. I'm not saying that that's the way it is. I'm saying that's the way it could be for all we know. So we can never really know anything for sure that happened in memory because we don't know if the past even existed. So that leaves for us what's going on right now in the present moment. But the present moment has no clear duration. If you notice, as you get closer and closer to honing in on the present moment, you know, you find that you're just as far away from it as you started. So the present moment, is it a second? Is it a nanosecond? Is it an entire eternity? And we just kind of come to interpret the world as though it goes by in separate seconds like it does. Uh, what happens is that if you try to hone in on the present moment, is that you find that it's quite impossible to do so because once you have said it's now, you, it's already slipped through your fingers because it's already now another present moment coming up. And what was happening in that moment that you were trying to grasp a hold of as the present moment is that now that's become memory and now that's become part of the past and so that could also be an illusion. So we don't really even know if the present moment even exists as a thing or it, and if it does exist, it has no clear duration. So if we can go through these types of thought processes and see how little we actually know about reality, we'll notice why naive realism is so naive. And so many people believe in naive realism with no evidence. Now, for seekers on the path who are actively contemplating the nature of self and reality, we will naturally start to question these ideas, these assumptions of what's real and what's not real. And when we do that and we start to go past the idea of naive realism, that's when there's a trap waiting for us right on the other side of that contemplation. So this is the other side of the horse to naive realism, and I call it naive solipsism. So solipsism is the belief that th the perspective that you're experiencing right now is really the only experience that there is. And everything else that happens in your little bubble of experience, it just is an illusion and there's no anybody else behind it. So if you see another person, they don't have thoughts like you or a mind like you, they are just the fodder of your personal bubble of experience. And once you really get a sense at how many holes are in the belief of naive realism, then it stands to reason, and reason is a very important word here, it stands to reason that solipsism is the way that things are. Now, as seekers, we're unlikely to label this as solipsism because there are also these different ideas like all is one, all is God, and these are non-dual truths that many um, people who have actually transcended the ego um, share with people and saying, oh, this is what I've experienced. But when it comes from the intellect, us trying to intellectually understand that, we come up with some really solipsistic results, even if we're not labeling it as solipsism. But again, if we use our minds to reason, which are, again, inherently limited to things of a practical nature, then we are going to naturally come to the conclusion that, oh yeah, reality is basically solipsistic. If everything is one thing, and then that one thing is my experience, maybe, and everything is connected through that experience, then aha, that must be the way that it works. But not so fast, because again, the human mind is limited to things of a practical nature. And so the second something becomes an idea or a belief, it automatically loses its truth. And so this is why I call this naive solipsism, because it's just the other side of the horse to naive realism. And so this is a really easy trap to fall into, and a pretty nihilistic and depressing one at that, because 
we can't even innocently enjoy reality in the same way that most people do who don't consider things like the 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 holes in naive realism most people go about their day and they can find little joys in this and that and the other thing because they're not really thinking of things in um, in terms of like how deep things go you know so whenever something positive happens to them in their reality it's like oh that's a positive thing or if a negative thing happens, oh, that's a negative thing. I mean, they are going to be on that roller coaster of suffering because they're not, um, they're not aware. But at the same time, they'll at least have little outlets for positive feeling. But a person who has adopted a belief in naive solipsism will have all the hopes of like transcending the ego and going past their experience. But what they really end up doing is cutting themselves off and ending up with an even smaller worldview than people believing in naive realism. Because essentially, if you think that reality is limited to your bubble of experience, and you know that maybe there's something else out there beyond this that's God, but you're not really experiencing that, well then, everything that happens to you in your life is going to kind of feel like, oh, this is just null and void. There's nothing really going on here. It's just an illusion. You know, and of course, since these are ideas, these things are not true. They are, you know, they are similar to what's going on. It's how someone who actually has an experience of transcending the ego might try to make concessions and explain things. But at the same time, those ideas themselves don't really hold water. And often when people are adopting the belief in naive solipsism, they don't realize that they're doing so. So it can be a really difficult trap to get out of because you feel like you're making progress on the path and you may not even realize that you've fallen into one of the traps. And that's sort of adopting a belief relative to the way the world works and thinking that the mind can correctly interpret what's going on here through this idea of naive solipsism by any other name. So what is the correct interpretation of what's going on here? Well, there's no correct interpretation because interpretations are of the human mind and are inherently limited. So anytime that you're interpreting what's going on here in reality, you're always going to have to sort of compress that down and, and make concessions and you're not really going to be able to understand it that way. So you're always going to either be falling on either side of the horse. You're going to be either falling over into naive realism or naive solipsism. So what would it actually mean to ride on top of the horse and to not fall off on either, either side? Well, basically, that means that you get comfortable abiding in uncertainty and realize that you can never know and not really seek to know, but more so seek to know that you don't know. And in doing these kinds of inquiries into reality, we can realize that we really don't know anything and that anything that comes from our mind in terms of an interpretation is essentially going to be a false premise because the human mind cannot know. And when we're able to let go of all of that and hold all of our beliefs at arm's length and for practical purposes like a tool, what happens is we'll open up our experience more to insight and perhaps eventually we'll be able to let go of the ego if we are open enough. So to avoid the traps of naive realism and naive solipsism, get comfortable abiding in your own innate innocence. We never know a single thing about the way reality actually works than we did, as we, than we did when we were newborn babies. So tap into that innocence, feel okay with not knowing. And let that inability to know humble you so that you can surrender to it and you can feel okay with your own limitations and blind spots and vulnerability living this human experience. And when the mind recognizes its futility in realizing things of this nature, it will surrender and then the mind will be quiet enough for you to be actually be open to this experience going on here beyond interpretations. And so any interpretation is going to limit you. So what you should seek to be is separate from the intellect's interpretations of reality so you can perceive exactly what is. 
Anyway, that's all I have for you now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, click the like button below and subscribe. Also, leave me a comment down below. And I want to say thank you very much to my patrons. You guys are really, really awesome. And if you are interested in becoming um, my patron in exchange for awards, I have a link down below in the description box. Also, I'm doing a new thing now where I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. And I may still, at, at the point that I post this video, I don't know if we'll have spots left. Right now, I have eight out of the 15 spots that I'm offering um, filled up, so I have seven left. Um, it, you'll just have to check there if you're interested. It's for one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching sessions over Skype. I'm considering starting a coaching program. Uh, but at first, I want to get my feet wet with the whole one-on-one -on -one experience of it. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and click the link below, and I have some information on my Patreon page about it. Also, if you're interested in getting weekly updates about my videos, you can either click the bell icon below, or you can go to thediamondnet.org, and I'll send you one email per week just saying, hey, this is the video that I released, this is what it's about. And so I never send any spam or anything like that, so you can go to thediamondnet.org if you're interested. Anyway, that's all I have for now, and until next time, keep becoming more you. Thank you.